So you may remember that about a month ago, I got these bad boys, my new specs, because I'm basically blind, and I decided it was probably about time I was able to see again. I can't really wear them in videos though. If you've noticed, I've only actually worn them in one video, because like the light bounces off the window, onto the glasses, onto the lens, and then I get like these weird white rectangles on the glasses that block my eyes. And it doesn't look good on the camera, so um... Yeah, and I only realised a few days ago that my trip to the opticians was actually quite weird and quite funny. So, um, I'm going to tell you about that today. So strap in, kids, because it's time for another story time with Courtney. Let's go. So I'll go to the opticians, spec savers, if you're interested. Walk up to the desk. Hi, got an appointment today. Get these, uh, get these things in my face. Get them checked out. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Just, uh... Just head upstairs. Ah, oh, thanks. So I walk upstairs and I am bang on time, right? If my appointment was at 12 o'clock, I was there at 12 o'clock. So I'm expecting to go upstairs and pretty much have my eye test straight away. So I go up to the desk, upstairs, go up to the lady, say, hi, I'm Courtney, got an appointment for uh, for now. She signs me and everything, yep, yeah, that's uh, it's all okay. If you wanna take a seat over there, please. No, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't think you understood me. My appointment, it's uh, it's right now. Yeah, if you, uh, if you just want to take a seat over there. What? I mean, isn't the whole point of an appointment that you get there and they're ready for you, so you just go straight in and get your stuff done? Imagine if they did that at hospitals. You get there and they go, actually, we're not quite ready for you yet. Can you, can you wait half an hour? No, not really, because in half an hour, I would have bled to death. Idiots. But anyway, I just accepted it, went and sat down, thought, hey, maybe they're a bit understaffed today. Maybe they're a couple minutes behind. It's okay, no big deal. Oh, how wrong I was. I was waiting 40 minutes. Yeah, not really what you want when you've booked an appointment, gotten up early, got on there, bang on time, to then be told to wait 40 minutes. Is it? But anyway, they eventually called me into this little room for a pre-test. And I think this was basically for them to assess if you do actually have trouble with your eyes, which I don't really get, to be honest. One, is that not what the eye test is for? And two, why would I be here if I didn't have problems with my eyes? I didn't come here because I was bored and I wanted something to do. I wasn't sat at home thinking, hmm, what should I do today? I know, I'll book an eye test. Not really what went through my head. And there was a woman doing my pretest, which I'll get onto in a minute. And as soon as we walked in to that little room, this little bad boy caught her attention. She went to me, I'm sorry, but I have to ask about your room stretcher. I'm always fascinated by him. My son has one, which I don't mind. I don't mind people asking me about my stretcher, but I was a bit confused. If your son has a stretcher, why don't you ask him about it? Why do you feel like it's more acceptable to ask me a complete stranger about my stretcher instead of talking to your own son. I thought that was a bit weird. But then the first thing she asked me, with no hesitation, went straight into it with, does it smell? That's uh, it's a bit, bit forward, don't you think? I know that the first thing people think of when they think of ear stretchers is that they smell, which, fair enough, if you don't wash it, it does. It's an open wound. What do you expect? But for that to be the first thing you ask someone you've just met, I'm not gonna lie, it took me by surprise. So after she had interrogated me about my ear stretcher, we came onto the pretest, or as I like to call it, the blinding light challenge. Bit of science coming up now, so you haven't completely wasted your time by watching this video. You might actually learn something. So as you know, we have our eyes, and there are three main parts to the eyes. There is the sclera, which is the white part of the eye, there is the iris, which is the coloured part of the eye, and there is the pupil, which is the black hole in the middle of your eye. But what you may not know is that the pupil is actually a hole. Now when I say hole, I don't actually mean a hole. It's more like, more like a lens in a camera. The way our eyes work and that we see things is light is reflected through our pupils and then the size of the pupil changes depending on how much light is present. That's why when it's dark our pupils get bigger because they're trying to let more light in so that we can see and when it's lighter our pupils get smaller because they're trying to let less light in so that we don't get blinded. So although we cannot see through our pupils with the naked eye, if you use the right equipment and you have enough light 
you can actually see through someone's eye, which I think is pretty damn cool. And that is exactly what they do at the opticians. Basically, they point an extremely bright light at your eye, flash it, take a picture as it is flashing, and voila, you have a picture of the inside of your eye. And this is cool and everything. I mean, I was amazed when they did it, but the only problem is, it's really bright. Like, really bright. Just looking at a light bulb hurts my eyes, so when they shone this light directly at my eyes, I thought I was gonna go blind. But anyway, after they tried to blind me, they checked the photos, found that there was nothing wrong with the inside of my eyes, all the nerves in my eyes were okay, which is good, because that would have been like serious damage to my eyes. And then finally, I was ready for my eye test. You know, after waiting another 10 minutes. But I eventually get called in, I had a man doing it this time. So I walk in, sit down, we go through all the basics, he asks me all the normal questions, and then we start the eye test. And he utters the two words that nobody ever wants to hear. He says to me, don't blink. Well I'm fucked now, aren't I? There really is nothing I can do, because you know, as soon as someone says to you, don't blink, your brain instantly starts playing mind games with you. It forces you to want to blink more than you have ever wanted to in your entire life. In regular day-to-day -day life, we blink. That's something we do. But I never feel like I have to blink. But when someone says to me, don't blink, suddenly my eyes become the Sahara Desert and every fibre in my being is screaming at me saying, blink, Courtney, blink, blink, blink. I didn't blink, just to let you know. I held it together, but it was tough. But during this whole don't blink scenario, I was greeted by another light shining in my eye, which is always nice. And anyone who's been to the opticians will know, when they shine that light in your eye during the eye test, they get really close to your face. Too close for a stranger, too close for anyone. I wouldn't want my friends coming that close to my face, let alone someone I've just met five minutes ago. But this optician took it a step too far because his face touched my face. Our faces touched. And you could sense, as soon as this had taken place, we both knew that this meant this, this interaction had been taken to a whole new level. And it was almost as if he didn't know how to tackle the situation. He didn't know whether to accept that it happened, make a joke out of it, you know, or to like act innocent, act like it never happened and just ignore it. I mean, I'm sat there trying to keep it together whilst he's over there sorting himself out for the next part of the eye test. And I'm just trying to wipe my brain of all previous memories so I can forget that it ever happened. It was awkward. And then it was time for the main part of the eye test where they put those weird looking glasses on your face and you have to read the eye chart and say like if one or two is clearer. And I'll tell you what, those glasses are one of the most uncomfortable things I've ever worn. When you buy glasses, they have that little bridge in the middle for your nose. So they sit on your face, nice and comfy, no problem. They didn't bother doing that with these glasses. They just thought, nah, forget it, won't bother. So these glasses are just sitting on my nose like a plank of wood or something, just digging into the skin as the test goes on. And I don't know if it's just me who has this problem, but when they put the different lenses in and they say to me, one or two, I can't really tell the difference. I always expect there to be a significant difference, like one's really blurry and the other one's a lot clearer. And it never is. They're practically the same. But I don't want to seem weird to the opticians or like I don't need glasses. So I just end up picking one randomly, probably messing up the results of the eye test and then they end up giving me the wrong glasses. Make your eye tests better. But anyway, after all that, the eye test came to a close. He had the little chat to me about my glasses, told me the results, gave me the lowdown, and he worded it pretty weird. He said to me, well, I'm gonna give you some glasses, but I don't really think you need them that much. Why are you giving them to me then? If you feel like I don't need them, I mean, I know I need them. I didn't come here for a laugh. I came here because I have bad eyes. But if you feel like I don't need them, why are you giving them to me? And then he said, you just need them for reading and driving and stuff. Oh, so I don't really need glasses, but I do need them for driving. You know, the thing where if I can't see properly, I could end up killing someone. Yeah, I think I'll take the glasses. So then I walked out of the room, checked out, picked my glasses, went home, and that was my trip to the opticians. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up down below. It really helps me out. Maybe share it with your friends. 
My Facebook, Twitter and Tumblr links are in the description below. Just go like, follow and follow if you haven't already. And I've actually just started my Tumblr back up. I didn't do it for a few months, but I've just started it again. So you should definitely go check that out. And I will see you next week for my Summit in the City video, which is this weekend. I cannot wait. It's going to be great. Okay, that's it. Done. Finito. End screen. Yes, for anyone still wondering, because I am still getting asked, I will be at Summer in the City on the Saturday. So if you see me, please come up and say hello. We'll talk, get a picture, and all that jazz. Okay, thanks. Bye.